Good morning, everybody. It is uh, a good day for me after so many fears because today we are presenting something exceptional, original for the history of Biennale. In a while, you will listen from the voices of the six curators of the different sections of the Biennale the description of an exhibition that for the first time has been conceived together by the six arts uh, to celebrate the 125th celebration, uh, anniversary of the uh, Biennale. We wouldn't like this year to be remembered only for uh, what happened, but also for this very important event that should, in my view, start a new route, I would say, extremely motivated uh, to create a dialogue among our arts, to set up a permanent laboratory transforming Venice into a center that is not only for excellence for, because of the Biennale, but also for research in contemporary arts. This, the idea of an exhibition curated by the six directors came before uh, the need to postpone the architecture exhibition the Padiglione Centrale in the Giardini was available, so it became something more strategic in our idea. More important because it widened up, because starting from a first suggestions proposed by the director of the theater festival, Antonio Lapella, who wanted to refer to the episodes of censorship in the history of the Biennale, we discovered that there are not real censorship episodes in the history of the Biennale, but rather self-censorship or neglect uh, towards certain artistic expressions. So this turned into something more complex uh, that is telling, telling us about the uh, most important episodes in the 125 years of history of the Biennale, moments of crisis, of development, of polemics. The possibility to use the central pavilion has enabled us to design to try to trace a path the contents of which have been chosen by the different directors and then were somehow coordinated uh, uh, by uh, by Cecilia Alemani she doesn't want to uh, to be defined as the coordinator. She will define her role later on. She will curate the art exhibition in uh, 2022. I want to thank the directors, uh, the staff of the Biennale, the collaborators, because at a time of difficulty and efforts in order to provide their own exhibitions and festivals, they have, however, supported this project with enthusiasm and commitment the exhibition will open on the 29th of August and it will continue until the end of December and it will be the first activity of the Biennale in 2020. Uh, something has already been done by the college section because we will also inaugurate the film festival followed by theater, dance and music festivals. Venice and the world will be full of Biennale from the end of August till the end of the year to start again in 2021. Thank you all. The floor now to Cecilia Alemani for her introduction. Thank you, President, for your presentation. Can you hear me? I am glad to be here for my first press conference in Biennale as the uh, curator of the uh, visual art section. I am sorry I cannot be there, but I am in New York. And as you know, you cannot move, you cannot travel 
uh, from the US. Uh, I hope I will be there at the end of August for the inauguration of the exhibition. Since I was appointed in January, the world has changed dramatically. We are experiencing emergency, and on one hand, Biennale had to take difficult decisions like postponing the architecture exhibition. On the other hand, uh, the exhibition we are talking about today is a sign of enthusiasm, a collective response to an exceptional moment. We thought it was important to give evidence that the arts continue also in time of difficulty, as the very history of the Biennale is telling us. Uh, the title of the exhibition is Le Muse Inquiete, la Biennale di fronte alla storia, the disquieted muses when the Biennale meets history. It will open at the end of August, and it is the result of the collaboration of the uh, directors of the different sections of the Biennale, supported by ASAC. It is a journey in the history of the Venice Biennale. Uh, with some uh, focuses on fundamental moments in the history of the 20th century when the history of the Biennale crossed its path with the history of Italy and the world in moments of transformation, of crisis, wars, uh, social conflicts, uh, generational changes and transformations that pressed uh, the boundaries of this Venetian institution. The Biennale is celebrating its 125th anniversary. It has not only been the institution, uh, a prestigious international institution, but it has also witnessed a number of changes and uh, social crises that have uh, uh, come one after the other during, from the end of the 19th century to date, like a seismograph uh, recording the tremors of history. The Biennale crossed two world wars. It was overwhelmed by social upheavals in 1968. It underwent uh, radical transformations in the 1970s. It uh, uh, witnessed the fall of the Soviet bloc, uh, contextualizing the end of the concept of nation state. The title is The Disquieted Muses. The title referred to the muses, uh, the god goddess of, of the Greek mythology, daughters of Zeus and Mimosine, uh, who represent the different artistic discipline. And here they are a metaphor of the six sectors of the Biennale, visual arts, cinema, music, theater, architecture, and dance. They are daughters of memory, and so they turn their look to the past, but thanks to the creative uh, strength of art, they can imagine new worlds and new possibilities. The title also refers to the famous painting by the Chirico, The Disquieting Muses, Le Muse Inquietanti, exhibited in the Biennale in 1948. Here, the muses are disquieted because they have to face the world outside the boundaries of art. For the first time in the history of the Biennale, these six disciplines organize a conversation telling the story, the global story of the institution. We have worked together for an interdisciplinary approach to uh, go through the history of the Biennale together and find connections and transversal narrations. The exhibition is based on uh, material by the ASAC archive, the seventh muse uh, in the exhibition, the prestigious historic archive for contemporary arts that was established in 1928, has provided documents uh, letters, uh, photographs, uh, videos, uh, drafts, and works of art that tell the story of the Biennale with original materials. As regards the time, the exhibition focuses on the history of the 20th century, starting from the first after war period, ending in 1999, with a chronological order that faces a, a constellation of themes and interdisciplinary chapters. It is a reflection on that short century into which history showed its tragic and overwhelming nature.
The setup, the display, is designed by Forma Fantasma, a couple of talented designers, Italian designers, who live in Amsterdam. They have uh, developed ambitious projects. The uh, display for the uh, exhibition of Bernini Carafaggio in Amsterdam and uh, a solo exhibit at the Serpentine Gallery in London. They have created uh, a, a layout, uh, a setup that organizes the very the extremely vast amount of material we have uh, reconnecting to historic uh, setup of the past, Gio Ponte, Carlo Scarpa, going through the important stages uh, in the changes in architecture and in the setup of the Biennale. This exhibition goes through the history of the Biennale through its exhibitions. We have tried to stress that the history of the arts does not only depend on the individual works of art, but also through the uh, different styles of presentation. We are going to try and tell you in detail some of the m major uh, elements in this exhibition, and then I will pass the floor to the directors of the different sections that will tell you about their discipline. As I was telling you, the exhibition starts in the period between the two world wars in uh, the year uh, 1930s. We decided to choose those years because in those years, some of the other sectors of the Biennale started in 1930, the first music festival, in 1932, the film festival, in 1934, the theater festival. The Biennale had started its first edition in 1895, but during the first years it was just visual arts. In those decades, uh, in Europe, we had uh, totalitarianism uh, that turned art into uh, a tool for political propaganda uh, and the opportunity to create a new relationship between the individual and the masses. Antonio Maraini directed the Biennale, chaired the Biennale from 1927 until 1942. He started a, a radical transformation of the Biennale on one hand. He tried to open up to the international world, uh, um, distinguishing this biennale, his biennales, from uh, those of the past that were more regional, more local. Uh, they had the idea of an exhibition as a salon. He instead decided to promote exhibitions abroad, inviting new countries to build new national pavilions in the Giardini, as was the case for the US in 1930. On the other hand, the institution itself changed. It turned into, it became a, an autonomous uh, institution, no longer dependent on the city of Venice, thus strengthening the influences of the fascist government. Those were the years in which Mussolini, Hitler, Goebbels, and the, the monarchs visited the Biennale to stress the fact that it was an important stage for new alliances between Italy and the world. Cinema was a fundamental sector in those years, and which is why I will pass the floor to Alberto Barbera, who will tell us something about the role of the film festival in the 1930s. Thank you, Cecilia. Cinema, even more than the other artistic expressions, can really serve as a catalyst to understand uh, in this decade, but also later on, uh, what were the relations between the Biennale and, for example, the fascist regime or the governments uh, that uh, followed uh, in that time, the cinema was the eye of the mirror of the 19, of the 20th century, a reliable witness that gave to our memory the most important events of the short century. But it was also a very sensitive seismograph that could record and intercept or uh, stimulate uh, and induce uh, sometimes transformations in collective behavior, social, uh, uh, social habits, uh, fashion, culture in general, sometimes also in 
in ethics and in the uh, collective uh, morale approach. If we go through the 1930s, uh, through the uh, mirror of the uh, cinema, we can realize that starting with 1932, the first film festival, there will be no festival in 1933 because it was a biennial uh, uh, event. The Biennale has maintained its autonomy as against the influences of politics of the fascist regime. And this was partly because of the role of guarantee played by Count Volpe, Count Volpi, who was a friend of Mussolini, by the way. He was a minister in uh, Mussolini's government. He had a personal relationship with Mussolini. But what changed? Uh, in uh, 1936, uh, with Goebbels' visit to the film festival, we see here one of the pictures, uh, which, is, uh, which was taken later. From that moment onwards, the presence of uh, political influences in the film festival was quite heavy. In 1936, Goebbels came to Venice, and the fascist regime that had somehow underestimated the power, the propaganda power of cinema, suddenly realized instead that it might play a role for fascist propaganda. And so uh, the first pressures started, not in 1937, because in 1937 uh, there was uh, the presentation of a movie that is the opposite, uh, The Great Illusion by Renoir. Uh, warmly welcomed by the applause of the public. He uh, received an international recognition for its artistic values. So we can see that up to 1937, somehow, the film festival and the Biennale enjoyed a privileged, uh, autonomous role, uh, independent from politics. With 1938, there was a break with the past. Political pressures forced uh, the jury to uh, give two awards uh, that were ideological awards to a German movie, Olympia, by Riefenstahl, and an Italian movie by Alessandrini, Luciano Serra Pilota was the title, and to protest against those uh, uh, pressures the French members, the French, British, and American members of the jury uh, gave, uh, resigned from their role, and there started the political boycott of the uh, film festival that in 1939 led to the birth of the Cannes Festival that didn't take place in reality because the Second World War started before it could, uh, the festival could start. From that moment onwards, we have the official boycott of the film festival, although in 1939 we still have uh, French films, French movies in the uh, film festival, um, some of the best movies for those years. From 1940 onwards, the film festival became something totally national. We, uh, they only uh, had uh, movies from the countries that were allied uh, with Germany, Italy, Germany, uh, Japan, or countries supporting this alliance. Everything finished with 1942, with the edition of 1942, when the film festival was suspended and was uh, restarted after the end of the Second World War in 1946. This is the uh, scheme of the uh, mobile and changing relationships uh, in a decade that was decisive and extremely complicated for the Biennale as a whole, but that in cinema had it its most apparent manifestation. I stop here for, for the moment, uh, recalling that cinema is present in this exhibition. 
also for the following years uh, to record the changes, uh, the transformations uh, Cecilia was mentioning before. And I want to take this chance to thank Giuseppe Gigi, who has supported me in my uh, research work uh, for the materials that uh, refer to cinema in the uh, film festival. As I am extremely busy in preparing the film festival for 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Alberto. The uh, exhibition continues with the years of the Cold War, focusing on the period between 1948 to 1964. The first years uh, 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 directed by Rodolfo Pallucchini, chaired by Rodolfo Pallucchini. We have focused on the exhibition of 1948, that is the edition of the Reconstruction, the first international exhibition in Europe after the Second World War, seven years before Documenta, that will be inaugurated in 1955. The Biennale of 1948 is aware of the need to update and uh, connect to a number of different experiences and artistic languages that had been forgotten or censored by fascism. For example, in visual arts, the Biennale of 1948 for the first time presents uh, uh, an exhibition uh, by Pablo Picasso, who was 67 at the time and who had never exhibited in the Biennale before. There was also an exhibition on Impressionism that had been uh, banned uh, in the previous decades. But the very star of this edition was uh, Peggy Guggenheim, who before opening her own museum on the Grand Canal uh, exhibited our collection in the Giardini of the Venice Biennale, in the Greek Pavilion that was empty that year, uh, with incredible uh, uh, settings curated by Carlos Carpa, introducing in Italy not only exceptional examples of uh, European modernism, like Mondrian, Brancusi, Kandinsky, Giacometti, but also the new talents of American abstractionism, like Jackson Pollock and Clifford Steele. Uh, both in this exhibition and in the room of the main exhibition in, uh, uh, in the Central Pavilion, uh, with the presentation of Fronte Nuovo delle Arti, there is uh, a contrast between uh, the conceptual and the representational language, a uh, contrast that reflects the blocks uh, in the Cold War and that will characterize many uh, aesthetic and political debates in those years, socialist realism against uh, abstract abstractionism as the international language of uh, Western liberalism. The dynamics of the Cold War are apparent in the music festival with many Russian musicians who had been banned uh, in their homeland and find a privileged platform in the Biennale. The floor to Ivan Fedele, the director of the music festival. I am convinced that this exhibition has a special meaning that goes beyond the important anniversary for the 125th uh, uh, year of the Biennale. It is uh, a chance to have a dialogue among the six sectors that discuss disquiet, disquiet and the uh, thrust uh, this, this disquiet has given to the different uh, uh, approaches, the different language of the Biennale, proposing them to the public of the world. This creativity has, uh, uh, has had to face in, with dramatic results sometimes the political regimes and the uh, more conservative, uh, if not reactionary visions of the world. This is the case of Sofia Kubaidulina, the Golden Lion for 2013. She was long banned and censored by the Soviet regime like Prokofiev or Shostakovich, who was uh, her mentor as a master together with other composers. The Biennale has always voiced and supported the work of these authors as is, uh, as is 
as can be seen with the first representation of the uh, w important work by Sostakovic, uh, Lady Macbeth in 1947, with the, uh, directed by Aurel Millos, with the stage designed by Bruno Montonati and scenes by Renato Gottuso, a high quality production. Another important event was the first representation of a scandalous uh, work, The Fiery Angel by Prokofiev, that took place in 1955 in Venice, directed by Giorgio Streller, uh, scenes by Luciano Damiani and costumes by Ezio Frigerio. This work was never represented while uh, the author, while Prokofiev was alive, because it had many problems with the censorship of the Soviet regime, starting from 1936, when it was composed. The first performance in the Biennale dates back to 1955, and that was an international event. Uh, this uh, 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 work has scandalous contents as far as religion and morale are concerned. And it was interesting to see the, uh, uh, the reaction of the public and of the critics of the time, also in the Western world. Going back to Sofia Gubaidulina, her music was uh, placed on the, in the index by the Soviet regime. She was a member of the so-called Group of the Seven of Chennikov, uh, defined by Tikhon Krennikov as authors of music that could be defined useless, uh, useless, uh, mad, uh, noisy mad, uh, rather than real musical composition. Among the seven composers accused of participating without authorization to European festival, we also had uh, uh, Sofia Gubaidulina. In the Soviet Union, one of the few opportunities of work for the composer was the so-called service music or applied music because writing soundtracks was a source of income for those authors who were excluded from the official uh, uh, so Soviet music. The soundtrack composed by Sofia Gobaidulina for the animation movie Mowgli in 1973, a movie uh, taken from uh, the novel by Kipling, directed by Davidov, is a very interesting example we will propose in room number six of this exhibition. Clearly, together with this subject, uh, we will have other uh, themes uh, uh, discussed, among them another golden lion, Tandu, a Chinese composer, and uh, a whole story uh, on the cultural revolution that totally rejected the idea and the music, the Western music, starting from Beethoven down to our days. Allow me to thank uh, Professor Cesare Fertonari of the State University of Milan, who has supported me in uh, the research for materials, and whom I want to thank warmly. And thank you all for listening to me. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, the exhibition continues with a focus on 1968, intended not only as the specific year of the great uh, student uh, protests that find in the Giardini an ideal stage, but 1968 intended as a long period of social transformation, social and cultural transformations that concern all the disciplines of the Biennale. For the Biennale of Visual Arts, the 1966 edition is characterized by the closing down of many rooms and sections with protests and boycotts uh, by the artists and charges by the police. In the following years, the cinem cinema experiences the same uh, upheaval, uh, and there is an alternative festival, Le Giornate del Cinema Italiano, at Cinema Olympia in the streets of Venice. But 1968, as uh, a period of social and uh, habit transformation, uh, is uh, uh, reflected in the theater uh, section that reflects uh, a new definition of oneself. I invite Marie Chouinard to tell us something about dance in that period. Okay, good. Um, so yes, I think the first thing I want to say is that the dance sector in um, Biennale 
was uh, created only in 1999. So before 1999, uh, we have very few um, uh, choreographers who were invited, but some of them were invited um, through the music sector and through the theater sector. Um, so it was created in 1999, the dance sector. Uh, it was at the uh, initiative of Paolo Barata, il presidente at that moment, and also the first director was Caroline Carlson. She was already uh, living in Venice uh, at that uh, moment. And when I look at the... Um, at who was invited before the creation of the dance sector, I'm really touched by particularly one uh, choreographer who is uh, of uh, Italian origin. She was born in, Ve in Firenze in uh, 1935, and her name is Simone Forti. And exactly for that period that uh, Cecilia was speaking about, she was a very important figure um, in uh, New York because she was uh, part, a pivotal part of the Judson Church group, which is a group of uh, artists. Some of them had been invited in the Biennale. Uh, artists of dance, principally women choreographers, who really created a radical tabula rasa in the um, dance field. There is dance before those years and after the Judson Church group. And um, um, Simone Forti, uh, she was awarded in 2011 the Yoko Ono Lennon Award for uh, courage in the arts. And um, it's a prize presented annually to artists who sought the truth in their work and demonstrated leadership, courage, resourcefulness in their work and risked their careers for pursuing a larger vision of the local or national interest without succumbing to a commercial and political constraint. So I think it's, we can be very proud in Italy to have Simone Forti um, to be such an important uh, figure. And this Judson Church group really created a transformation, not only in dance, but in the visual arts, in the performance art, in theater. So it was really a shift moment into the history of the art. So we will have the chance to see um, a video. We have, uh, she performed the full, uh, Lent evening um, uh, at the Biennale, and we still have a video in the archives, and I will be so glad that we can see that. She is simply improvising, dancing in her own way, but there is, we can see there the, um, the origins of all the new dance that was then flourishing um, in the, the years coming after that. So, and I want also to thank uh, Elisa Vaccarino for having collecting all she could find, even if the dance sector was not existing before the year of its creation. Uh, she, we could find some things uh, with uh, Merce Cunningham, with Pina Bausch and many others that you will see. So I thank uh, Cecilia for uh, 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 the great work of all organizing all of this. It was, it was a great work. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, Marie. Thank you so much. Grazie mille, Marie. <clears throat> La mostra dopo si... The exhibition continues in the 1970s when the Biennale goes through great internal changes. In a certain sense, it absorbs and incorporates the uh, uh, protests of 1968, reinventing the institution itself. Those were the years of Carlo Ripadimiana, who chaired the Biennale from 1974 to 1978. His Biennales were radically different from the previous ones. In those years, a new statute was approved, uh, replacing the old fascist statute that was still in force. The very structure of the Biennale changes. It is no longer based on large sectorial exhibitions, but it rather opens up to an interdisciplinary approach with many events that take place around the city in the surrounding territory with uh, a dynamic agenda rich in uh, exhibitions, uh, presentations, meetings and seminars. These were 
thematic and intervention in editions open to uh, politics with an anti-fascist objective. 1974 was uh, dedicated to the freedom of Chile, uh, the year after the coup by Pinochet. In 1976, uh, the Biennale looked at Spain, the year after uh, the death of Franco. And finally, the last Biennale in 1977, that became famous because it cost uh, many jobs uh, and it celebrated the cultural descent in the Soviet Union. In those years, Ripa Di Meana invited artistic directors and uh, experts in the different sectors to curate the different uh, sections, thus eliminating many crowded committees that had characterized the previous decades. He brings Luca Ronconi to direct the theater festival. Vittorio Gregotti uh, will uh, supervise uh, visual art and architecture exhibition. Ar architecture was a part of the visual art exhibition at the time. In those years, uh, some of the future directors of the visual art exhibitions will start their training. Germano Cella and Taral Zeman, they curated uh, in those years exhibitions that are legendary. La, like Ambiente Arte and Le Macchine Celibi. Theater in those years uh, witnesses a radical change, uh, rethinking its expressive uh, styles at a time when uh, the representation was in a crisis. Those were the years of great master masters like Rotowski and Meredith Monk. I pass the floor to Antonio Latella, who directs the theater festival, who will tell us about the role of theater in those years. Th Thank you, Cecilia. It was nice to spend uh, uh, these days uh, with you in the archive and understanding that an archive can serve as a source of uh, memories. Memories are the pathetic side of uh, our memory. Theater with dance. Uh, is the art that from the very beginning it knows that will not give something that will remain in history, but it will only survive in memory. It is in memory, not uh, in individual memories. The central part of uh, the exhibition uh, refers to what Cecilia, Cecilia was mentioning, Ronconi and his project. Uh, focused on the creative process rather than on the final act. The process as the arrival of uh, creation. He did so with many artists, some uh, mentioned by Cecilia, Grotowski, uh, Monk. Uh, the, those artists uh, all tended to uh, a new language, to get out of a traditional idea of theater, to fill the empty space between uh, the spectator and those on the stage, to fill this space, to go on the streets, to have theater in the squares, to speak with, uh, uh, with people transforming the viewer uh, from a passive subject to an active subject. This is what we are trying to do in this exhibition, uh, speaking of theater in a moment of crisis for the representation. Ronconi is a central uh, moment, I think. What is interesting is that for the first time we have an attempt to speak of a different type of festival, not a festival to spec spectacularize theater, but rather a festival that focuses on study and creative uh, process, trying to share them with uh, the public. It is the International Laboratory of Theater that originates there. That was the Biennale of the Descent, a Biennale when many artistic directors dissented from the dissent. Allow me to thank Federico Pellini for his dramaturgy, for this being together in this exhibition. Thank you all. Thank you. 
we can go on by mentioning the 1980s, uh, the Biennales by Ripa di Meana bring us to the creation of the first architecture exhibition that was inaugurated in 1980, uh, guided by Paolo Portoghese with the famous uh, La Strada Novissima, using uh, the arsenale and the corderie for the first time, transforming them into a promenade where the spectators can walk through the facade of the buildings that had been built in the beautiful spaces of the corderie. It was the year of the Teatro del Mondo by Aldo Rossi that together with the Strada Novissima becomes the symbol of the new postmodern architecture. For the visual arts, uh, these preconditions result in the Turn to painting, uh, celebrating the first edition of Aperto 80, the young artist section curated by Achille Bonito Oliva and by Harald Zeman at the Magazzini del Sale. The floor to my colleague Arshim Sarkis, who is the director of the architecture department, to tell us about that fundamental historic moment for architecture. Thank you, Cecilia, and uh, thank you, Roberto. Thank you both for convening the different media of the Biennale and for bringing us together under one roof, as one art inspired by one muse, no matter how disquieted she is. These are actually some of the ambitions of the 17th Architecture Biennale, opening in May 2021 now, but I'm very, very happy to see them manifest themselves earlier in this truly landmark exhibition. As Cecilia mentioned in this exhibition, architecture is present in four different moments at four key milestones in the evolution of the Biennale. Initially and from its inception, uh, the Biennale has architecture present in it, even though simply as the container, as the architecture of the pavilions, representing the national identities, competing and changing identities, so be it, and uh, primarily as expressed in the facades of the pavilions. Here, Forma Fantasma are presenting a very provocative collage of the facades of the central pavilion to illustrate uh, the presence of architecture in this initial manifestation. Uh, secondly, and then with the appointment of Vittorio Gregotti, as uh, Cecilia mentioned, as director in the 1970s, architecture moves from being the container to being the content, as one of the plastic arts in the exhibition. And here we're celebrating the different contributions of Vittorio Gregotti, who unfortunately passed away this uh, past year. Thirdly, architecture moves from being content to being context. And uh, here it will be celebrated in this exhibition and the official start of the Architecture Biennale in 1980 with Paolo Portuguesi as the director, but also with Aldo Rossi. And uh, both of them not only uh, celebrated the advent of postmodernism in architecture, and actually articulated it uh, as, a, as a movement uh, very, very strongly. I mean, one would say that the advent of postmodernism architecture is uh, synonymous with the advent of architecture in the Biennale, in the Venice Biennale. But uh, Portuguese and Rossi also brought architecture to the city, and they brought it into the city of Venice, specifically with the many competitions uh, for Venice that were specifically organized and exhibited at the Biennale. Fourthly, and finally, in the 1990s, uh, we mark uh, architecture's presence at the Biennale, uh, and particularly in the exhibition of Hans Hollein, uh, as architecture moves, and the Biennale moves from architecture as being a form of context confirmation to a form of context transgression, as an agitated, as an agitated medium that is no more content with the affirmation of the city and of architecture's edifying presence, but seeking to disquiet the medium, seeking to disquiet the muse. So for all of the above, I just wanted to thank Cecilia for helping us disquiet the muse, and to thank Roberto again for his truly inclusive, synthetic, and collaborative event. This speaks volumes, Roberto, to the direction of the Biennale under your presidency. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shim. Grazie, Shim. Um, la mostra. Thank you. Thank you, Shim. The 
uh, exhibition ends with a look on the 1990s, the end of the Cold War, the fall of the Berlin Wall, uh, the end of the uh, nation-state concept, and the opening up of new mappings. The theme of the nation-state was one of the basis of the creation of the very Biennale. Biennale is the expression of the nation-states as main actors in the 19th and 20th century. In this section, we will focus on a number of national pavilions of 19th the Russian pavilion by Kabakov and the German pavilion by Hans Hake, you see in the slide, that stages the ruins of Germany, but it, also, it is also uh, an image of reconstruction after unification. Uh, later on, in the Germano Celant Biennale of 1997, uh, we can find the symbol uh, of uh, uh, this idea in Marina Abramovic polishing uh, hundreds of bovine bones, uh, referring to the ethnic cleansing in the Balkans in the 1990s, uh, a tragic allegory of the destiny of that area. And finally, the first Biennale by Harald Zeman in 1999, where the exhibition uh, ends. Uh, the title was Dappertutto, widening uh, our uh, geographies, including new Chinese artists, uh, understanding the importance of a new globalization in which uh, national borders are less relevant and are constantly connected to international events. Uh, 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 widening, we are still experiencing when a small city in China is much closer to Venice than we could even imagine. Allow me to close uh, here. Uh, I want to thank, uh, first of all, uh, President Cicutto for giving us this extraordinary chance to work together and to create an exhibition that we hope will be a surprise and and a moment uh, of discovery of the history of the Biennale, also for those who are expert in it. I want to thank the directors of the different uh, sections of the Biennale who have worked together uh, with uh, commitment uh, over these months. Their collaborators allow me to uh, mention uh, Elaria Papini and uh, Miss Culiberti, who have coordinated the exhibition, and a special mention to the ASAC uh, uh, archive, Elia Durante, and all those who work there, because they are really making uh, an extraordinary uh, work. Uh, thank you, and the floor again to the President. I am really uh, enthusiastic of what I've heard so far. I want to thank all the directors uh, of the different sections. I am convinced this exhibition can show our basic objective, that is to say, the DNA of the uh, Biennale, that is not to limit our activity to exhibitions with a beginning and an end, giving the sense of a continuous flow of initiatives, and I want to thank uh, the Azak Archive, which is like a, a hidden river, helping us to interpret history with the eyes of knowledge, starting to try and design our present and our future. Thank you all, and I now leave uh, space to the questions of the journalists.